Hi, this is Jake from Optimus Futures, and in this video, I'll be giving you a general walkthrough through the Oanda web-based Forex trading platform. So like I said, this is a general walkthrough, and I'll just be giving you a brief walk walkthrough or tutorial on where some of your favorite features may be located on the web-based version of Oanda. So to start off, the charting feature is the most prominent on this platform. At any time, if you do want to change the instrument you're trading, you can simply highlight in the upper left hand corner here where my mouse is currently hovering over, delete the previous entry, and then just enter in your Forex instrument as necessary. So for example, if you just type in USD, you'll get everything that populates or registers with that USD tag in it. And then we can simply left click. So we have the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar here. And as you can see, our chart automatically reconfigures itself to that instrument. Now located next to that are some of our chart customizable sections. So here we have the, the time display. So by default, it should be at 30 minutes. As you can see, there are quite a few different options down here. An alternative is down at the bottom left of our chart, as you can see. Our time frames are listed here as well, and we actually have a couple of different ones, such as five days, three minutes, six minutes. So you just left click, and as you can see, our chart automatically changes. Now heading back up to the top left, we have our chart style or the type. So by default, it should be at candles. We can change it to bars, line. There's a ton of different options here. Now, one of the unique features of the Oanda web base is the compare or add symbol. This can be used to compare two Forex instruments to one another. So if we left click that compare button, we have two different options. We have compare and add symbol. So first we'll go add symbol. Again, you can just manually type in the symbol that you'd like to add to your platform. As you can see, we have the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar here. If we left click, as you can see, it will add two sections to your chart now. One with the original symbol that we started with, the US versus Canadian dollars there in the top left. And then we have that second one again, we added the US Canadian dollars. But as you can see, it put it in its own subsection of the chart. If you want to keep one section entirely, you can do so by left clicking the overlay main chart option. So as you can see here, we'll just do so one more time. This is actually not a good example because we're using the same market. But as you can see, if we'll select this one, it keeps both price graphs in the main portion of your graph. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, you can compare both graphs side by side. They're both in the same exact time frame and both within the same section. So very easy way to compare two markets if you intend to trade both of them or if they are respective to one another and they may influence a price action of one another. This is a great way to compare both of them. Heading back to compare now just to show you the difference. If we do pull up a random Forex instrument, we'll pull up a Euro contract and we left click that. As you can see, it completely overlays it onto the main sub portion of the graph. We got a lot going on here, I know. There's two different sub symbols and then this comparative symbol. Just to show you an easy way to get organized here, all your symbols are located directly under your main portion here. So as you can see, if we just either show or hide these, we can disable or enable them as we'd like. If you want, you can adjust each symbol format individually, or we can just simply click and delete out of that by clicking that X there. Real easy. Again, feel free to mix and match as you need. As we continue on, let me just show you real quick. There's actually different layouts you have for charts. So this is the main layout, as you can see. We only have one. But let's say, for example, you do have multiple monitors or would like to compare multiple different charts at the same time. You can select a different layout here. And as you can see, we can open multiple charts as we need. 
Now I won't be going into each indicator and drawing tool individually, but just as a brief overview goes, as you can see, you do have the indicator section here. There's a ton of different available indicators. If you need, you can manually search using the search bar at the top. As you see, I just pulled up the MACD. With the left click, it automatically applies it to our chart there. And please keep in mind, again, as it did work for those symbols, if at any time you want to get rid of something or hide it, simply just click that show hide button or that delete to completely remove it from your charts there. And that button in the middle will bring up the format button. It will bring up your format window, which is essentially the, just the settings of whatever you pull up. Now, as far as indicators and drawing tools go, feel free to check out the left-hand side of your charts there for a bunch of different measuring tools, drawing tools, magnets, a whole lot of different things all readily available for you. One last thing I would like to mention as far as editing charts goes at any time, if you want to undo something, just left click that undo remove source. And as you can see, it'll undo your last action. That wraps it up for the charts. Let's continue on. So on the left hand side here, as you can see, we have a favorites bar. You can add favorites as you like. If we go to Forex, this will show pretty much every instrument that you may need. Left clicking any of these, as you can see, we'll pull up an order window. There's a ton of different customization options we have here. We have buy and sell sides, as you can swap back and forth. You have your different order types, so your market, your limits, and your stops. We can change the units or the quantity, as you can see here. We can adjust take profit and stop lost legs, whether you have that in pips, you can adjust that up or down, or by price, that is also possible. There's trailing stops located at the bottom. Again, you can do so by price or by pips. And then we have our upper boundaries, which we can set as well. Now, if you do click on the limit section, obviously these will change just a bit. You get stop loss now as an added parameter. Again, you can adjust in pips or price. Whatever you left click on and it's highlighted blue, that will show you what you are changing. And one also thing that I didn't mention that was not available in market orders are your expiry, of course, and the price you actually place it at. So please keep that in mind. And then, of course, for your stops, you have a trailing stop, which can be added as well. All the other parameters pretty much are comparative. So now continuing, continuing on, just to show you, pretty much every section of this platform is customizable. They all are considered components. So as you can see, we have a rates component, charting component, there's accounts. There's a whole lot of different stuff here. So just by clicking add component, you could, for example, add a news section to this. You see there's something with ice futures that is popping up. We have something with the G7 political economic calendar. If you just left click that, it'll bring up your news article as you can see there. Heading back just up to the charting section now, just to show you adding another component. As you can see, each field, again, is its own component or its own section. So up there, we have the news in our rates. Here, we can put position ratios on top of our charts if this works for you. And again, as you can see, you can swap back and forth at any time. Just a few more sections now. We do have accounts in the bottom left. So if you do have multiple different trading accounts or you're, you're trading live and you need to keep track of your balance or your profits and loss at any time, you can refer to this section here. Margin used or available is also shown in percentage in accordance to how much you have available. So that is quite nice. Again, you have your component section here. So for example, if you wanted to add an order book, you could do so in this section as well. Feel free to check your orders and positions in relativeness to the different instruments you have here or whether they're cumulative, non-cumulative or net of your order book. And finally, we have the section towards the bottom right. This is pretty much just an order summary window. So you have all of your trades, your orders, any positions you may have in all previous trade activity. Again, just like anything else, you can add additional um, components. 
Now, I just would like to mention that being that I am in a demo account, some of these are limited or I have already used them. So just keep in mind, they may be grayed out if you're using a demo or like me, if you have already added components, you can only add one component at a time. Other than that, if at any time you do need to reset your platform the way it looks, just click this reset layout here on the far left hand side. You'll get a confirmation window and if you click reset layout after it does load, as you can see, we're back to the default. So if you ever screw up anything too much, feel free to just hit that. But that just about wraps it up for this video. Again, just a general overview of just kind of showing you where everything is on the platform, getting you comfortable with everything. If you do have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below. If you're looking to try out a demo of Awanda or would like to open a live Forex trading account, feel free to refer to the description for a link as well. Other than that, thanks for watching and we hope you found this video helpful.